All right, guys, so free will versus determinism. <laughs> this is a pretty big topic, and I'm going to try and approach it a little bit differently and hopefully give you guys more of a bigger picture perspective because this is I'm not here to debate one side or another. That's not what I'm about. I like to bridge these worlds together and hopefully try to reconcile these paradoxes to a certain extent. Now before we continue about this whole free will versus determinism, like do we really have the power of choice or is everything predetermined? Now before I go into that, I want to talk a little bit about the law of polarity, which is the fourth hermetic principle. I'm going to butcher it and give you a simplified version of what it is. But the law of polarity simply states that opposites are identical in nature, but different in degrees. Everything in existence has its polar opposites, right? We live in this dualistic realm, whether we like it or not. And the thing about these seemingly opposites is that these extremes may meet, all paradoxes may be reconciled. You've got up and down, hot and cold, black and white, male, female, but you get my point. And many of you are going to have a basic understanding of what duality is. And for those who do not, I would invite you to check out the seven hermetic principles. It will change your life and will allow you to think think and perceive life in a much clearer kind of bigger picture way because these laws govern everything and you cannot break natural law at least without consequence and that is the mess that society has gotten in today right of course and effect but that's a whole different story but the reason why I'm briefly touching this is because it's very important to understand especially if we're gonna go into any other philosophical debate because as soon as you think it's like this versus that, you know, science versus religion, the left versus the right, whatever it is, you are only seeing one side of the coin. And it's not that one is right, one is wrong. Again, they're identical by nature. You look at even hot and cold. It's not that hot is the opposite of cold. It's that hot is, has more concentration of heat energy and cold is, has lack thereof. And as soon as you have one against the other, then this creates a lot of disharmony chaos and a lot of conflict and it's about marrying these two together okay so what does the law of polarity have to do with free will versus determinism well like I stated for anything to exist in this reality by definition it has to have a polar opposite and it's not that one is true one is false it's just different ways of perceiving this reality so the very concept of determinism has to mean that there is free will as well this is a very complicated subject and again I'm not going to debate whether there is free will or determinism because I think it's a bit of both it just depends on what you're tapping into and before I go on because a lot of people get caught up in semantics and definitions and stuff like that so for the sake of this video let us define free will as the power of acting without the constraint of necessity or fate the ability to act at one's own discretion the ability to choose think and act voluntarily for many philosophers for many philosophers, to believe in free will is to believe that human beings can be the authors of their own actions and reject the idea that human actions are determined by external conditions of fate. And reject the idea that human actions are determined by... See, again, this is, just, this is just saying there is only free will or there is only determinism. This is what happens when you don't learn these important principles first your perspective gets skewed, right? And, this, and we live in a very polarized society where it's this or it's that. Let this be our final battle. <laughs> Let us go over determinism, right? Or cause and effect, or what Buddhists will call karma. So is your life determined? Well, in many ways, yeah, it is, because it's like, it all depends on where you were born, right? who your parents are, who your friends are, every single thing that you've ever done in your life, everything that's ever happened to you, the culture that you're brought up with is obviously going to play a massive, if not all the part of who you are today. If you look at free will again, it's the ability to choose, think and act voluntarily. And I believe that humans are sovereign over their own mind. And we do have the power to choose. We do have the power to make our lives 
better. The thing is, guys, I believed in determinism. Like, I was 100% convinced that we have zero free will. None whatsoever. Especially after listening to Sam Harris and Leo from Actualize.org. And they explained it in a way that was like, wow, yeah, that logically makes sense. Yeah, and this, we are bound to cause and effect. And where we are born is going to affect where we end up, right? But that's the problem when you think in absolutes. When you get caught up with concepts and ideas, you're already limiting yourself and putting boundaries up to, all right, this is that. But the thing about duality, guys, is that you can transcend it. And again, what makes us human special is that we have that self-awareness. We can transcend this. You can have an experience of divinity, of your own free will, of your own destiny. So yes, while the vast majority of people in the society are completely trapped in determinism. Everything that they do is completely determined by their environment, by the TV they watch, from the programming, what their government says, what their friends and family says, because they never question what they're doing. But some people who finally do wake up and they go, hang on a sec, hmm, maybe I should stop watching TV because they're kind of programming me to think in these certain ways, but you can break free from that. And that's when you do have your free will, you do have the power to choose because every single person in this world does and can have the power to change their life for the better. But it's a lot easier said than done. And this is where I feel a lot of empathy for most people because it's fucking hard, man. We've gone through our whole life just getting filled up with all these bullshit self-limiting programming and it's difficult, it's a challenge to reprogram your subconscious mind. But you can do it, it just takes a lot of uh, tenacity, right? And that you just gotta just keep going. And you know, it's easy to fall into nihilism and to think that this is all meaningless and everything is predetermined and it doesn't matter what you do. But the thing is, guys, guess what? That's a belief system. It's BS, right? Belief system. <laughs> the thing about believing in a concept, it's limiting in and of itself. So you believing in determinism is just as deluded as me believing in free will. But which delusion is going to give you the most practical result? Which delusion is going to serve this world better? Which delusion is going to be more empowering, right? And contribute to the greater good? of humanity. Then you could say like, yeah, maybe free will is an illusion. And everything that I'm saying right now was completely predetermined to my emotional state and everything that happened before. And yeah, it could be. Guys, life is a lot more complicated than that, right? Reality is absolute infinity. There are infinite amount of possibilities. And this world isn't as you may think. So don't lose hope, guys. And maybe to a certain extent, everything is predetermined, but we do, I believe we do have a little wiggle room. Like we have free will, but only to a certain extent. Because I think, and this is not the case for all people, of course, I am just generalizing, but I think a lot of people who just cling on to determinism cling onto it because it removes their responsibility for their own life. You know what I mean? And you got to think, why do you believe in a certain idea I mean, yeah, of course, there's the logical, scientific side of things, which is only, again, one side of reality because there's a lot of this shit that isn't logical, isn't rational, isn't conscious. And I'm not saying that everything bad that's ever happened to your life is your fault because guess what? It's not. A lot of times it's because you're unconscious, right? And it is predetermined from your environment. But as soon as you are conscious as soon as you have that self-awareness and you step back and you analyze your choices that is when you do have the responsibility and you do have the choice to change your life for better or for worse now just because we have the power of a choice it doesn't necessarily mean that we can control what we want and i think this is where people say that no free will doesn't exist because everything that you've ever wanted in life there is like a predetermined fate or destiny for you and I actually believe that to be the case, but you do have the free will not to live out that destiny, right? You can have the free will to have an amazing freaking life or, a, or one full of suffering. Like you have that choice and you do have the power of choice. And that's the point I'm trying to make in this video. And you can think of free will as the conscious mind, determinism as the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is going to predetermine everything that, pretty much everything that you do. But the more you exercise your free will, right? The more you practice your self-awareness, 
your freedom expands and you're able to make more choices. But you do have the power of choice. You do have that freedom. You're not a slave. You're only a slave if you allow external circumstances to govern your life. It's just all this icky kind of ugly programming that has got us into this mess to begin with. So we gotta reprogram the subconscious mind and exercise our free will. If believing in determinism makes you depressed and uh, makes you fall into hopelessness or whatever, and then these people use that rationalization like, yeah, but at least I'm looking at the truth. It's like, no, you're thinking of a mental construct in your brain, which you're perceiving through a subjective lens and then projecting onto reality. As soon as a thought form enters your mind and it comes out, in the form of words, you've already lost like the essence of the thing. All truths are half-truths and all paradoxes may be reconciled to a certain point. And if believing that you have free will empowers you to make better decisions, to improve your life and to minimize suffering and maximize joy in the world, and you can practically see and measure this, in real time, then I don't see that there's anything wrong with that. It seems like the logical choice to go down. So again, I'm not saying that determinism is, is, is wrong. In fact, it's mostly right. It's, most of this society is run, is completely determined by their environment and they don't exercise their free will whatsoever. So when you ask, do we have free will? Well, no, we don't for the most part because most people don't tap into it. Most people don't want to. But remember that we've got this self-awareness and we can transcend this reality, at least on an experiential level. And when you project your belief system and apply that to this is how reality is, again, your perspective is skewed and erroneous because this whole world, this whole reality is a mental projection. Everything has to exist in the non-physical before it goes to the physical. Even science agrees with this. First there was nothingness and then, <laughs> then there's something. Well, the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of determinists is only looking at the effect part of the cause and effect, right? The material plane, just using the logical, rational, calculated left side of the brain and not understanding that there's actually a bigger picture to this. So it's not as simple as, oh, because you have free will, that means you can do anything you want in this reality. It's like, no, you're still bound by certain restrictions. But again, you do have the choice to create your own reality. It's just that you've got to go at the subconscious level first and reprogram that shit. Otherwise, you're always going to stay in this cycle and all your shit's going to come up over and over and over again because you may consciously think that, okay, this is bad for you, but everything in your programming, in your subconscious is, t is causing your behaviors to do that thing over and over and over again. So you've got to look at the cause, right? Not just look at the effect. And that's where most people get stuck in. Okay, I don't even know where I went in this video. Um, probably went on a few tangents that made no sense whatsoever. But uh, I did just want to make this video just free associate and hopefully give you guys a different perspective on this topic. Um, but please let me know what you think in the comment section below. But besides that, that is it. If you wish to support the channel, check out the Patreon. You can join our private Discord server where we can hang out. Um, or you can get some merch. But aside from that, guys, have a good one. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.